Meredith is making me cry already. I need to give the speech. Well, hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> I'm truly grateful for this honor to be able to continue my work of increasing trans inclusion and to be on the board of the center. I am very proud of that. It definitely feels like it's a full circle moment here for me. I'm standing here as a, as a very proud transgender woman of color, a proud immigrant. You know, growing up in the Philippines, I was very lucky to have found my trans mother named Tiger Lily. When I was 15 years old, she asked me to join a, my first trans pageant. And that night, I ended up winning second runner-up, best in swimsuit, and best in long gown. It changed my life. Being a trans beauty queen actually became my job. You know, that's not a bad first job, right? At 15 years old. It, I found my chosen family. I found my best sisters during those formative years. But you see, in the Philippines, trans people are culturally visible, but not politically recognized. It's a majority conservative Catholic country where you could attend a morning weekend church, then go home and watch a trans pageant on national television at lunchtime. That irony is not lost on me. So when I moved to California, it was almost the other way around. There was a degree of political recognition, but there was no trans pageant on national TV. I mean, I remember one of the first questions I had, where is the trans pageant? I just want to join. <laughs> As a young immigrant, I was held by trans women like Cecilia Chung, Tita Aida, Tamika, and the many trans Filipina in San Francisco at the time at the community center that supported me and welcomed me in a country, in the culture that was all new to me. As a model for many years, and even before I came out, I remember going to castings thinking, are they gonna find out? Is this the day when they find out? I remember this one job that I did. I was doing a commercial for a lip gloss commercial and when I got home, I was so paranoid. This is it, they will find out. Looking back at that time, I was so afraid and full of shame. You see, I was working in an industry that is all about the power of imagery. But I was not being seen as my authentic self. There was no space at that time. So when I decided to come out and share my story to the world on a TED Talk, I wanted it to be big. I wanted it to mean something. I wanted to take that risk. I launched Gender Proud Productions with my friend and co-founder, Ali Hoffman, to advocate for transgender rights and produce intersectional stories and what it means to be trans and gender non-conforming. One of our first projects was actually to spend time at the center, to spend time with trans youth at the trans youth program at the LGBT center and simply ask them to define what is beautiful for them. That project became an inspiration to our first web, se web series and TV special with Logo TV. We need to continuously support and give space for trans youth, especially trans youth of color, to be who they are. As a producer, it is critical that I center the most marginalized when it comes to storytelling. A series that we produce with Fusion TV about the experiences of trans women of color when it comes to employment featured Alexis, an immigrant in New York, a college graduate from Argentina, newly transitioned, she shared her stories of rejection on job applications, but also her perseverance to be who she is. Trans people of color have four times the national unemployment rate. 47% of trans and gender non-conforming people in the U.S. were not hired or denied promotions because of our identity. 
When we center stories of the most marginalized, we begin to deconstruct the intersecting layer of institutional transphobia. Racism, sexism, classism, ableism. Yes, we've made progress. But the last year, 27 trans people, most are people of color, most are under the age of 35, were killed here in the United States. We can't continue this way. But as a storyteller, it is revolutionary to learn and show complicated lives of trans people beyond our transition stories. You know, I just want to be lost in stories of trans people falling in love. In sci-fi utopian movies, where are my trans brothers and, sibli and siblings? I think trans people are the real unicorns. <laughs> trans people's ability to survive, to thrive, to claim our space of worth is a lesson in enlightenment. In this current political drama, the constant attack on trans and LGBTQ lives, I'll tell you what, I will make my voice the loudest that it could be and I will never, ever apologize for being who I am. Thank you so much for this moment. I appreciate it.